some of y'all ready for the word this morning? All right, we're going we're gonna to jump right into it. Amen. And by the way, I'm also a July baby. This is my birthday month as well. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm, I'm turning 23. No, I'm not. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Garfield, I'm praying for you, brother. I am praying for you. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. So uh, uh, we're going to go. We're going to start with uh, John chapter 14, verse 15. And we're in the midst of a, uh, a series uh, called Loving Him in a mini-series uh, uh, talking about the Ten Commandments. Uh, and here's where uh, our theme verse is for this morning. John 14, 15, if you love me, obey my commandments. If you love me, obey my commandments. Uh, and if you're going to love someone or if you're going to be loved, a part of the conversation is you can tell someone how you expect them to love you. If you love me and I love you, here are the ground rules, here are the expectations. And one of the things that God says clearly, if you love me, um, then one of the things that you will do as proof that you love me is obey my commandments. And we see that in the New Testament. So that means we can't skip it. We can't skirt it. We can't uh, translate it out because it's in the New Testament. It's for us. Uh, and then Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 is our focus for today. Simply remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. This is the fourth commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now, I want to just shine the light here a little bit on, on some of the commandments briefly. And then next Sunday, as the Lord leads, um, you know, God will take us deeper and further. And we'll talk about that a little later. But with the different commandments, there's some uniqueness to the commandments. The first three commandments are commandments that directly have to do with what God is asking us to do for him, all right? Then, then the fourth commandment, which is the Sabbath, and as I've wrestled and prayed about this, I've discovered that the Sabbath commandment, the fourth commandment, which is about the Sabbath, uh, is the only commandment that really has to do with us. That means it has to do with him, and it has to do with us, and how we relate, how we connect, uh, uh, how we spend time together. And so uh, it, is, it is a commandment that is for us on both sides. Uh, and then the last six commandments uh, have to do with how we, we relate with each other, starting with our parents and then everybody else in society. So we'll cover those as the Sundays uh, go by. Now, the first point I want to focus on today is this. God made us. God made us. He created mankind. He made us. And uh, as the designer of mankind uh, and the manufacturer of mankind, anyone who designs something has a purpose in mind. Any, anything that you have purchased, whether it's a pair of shoes or a pair of glasses or a car, there's a designer. There's no uh, evolution where there was a big bang and your glasses just showed up. Uh, with, with the right prescription so you can see. <clears throat> There's a design behind that, and a good designer will consider certain things. But most manufacturers and designers will provide a warranty for the product they have created or designed, but in order for that warranty to be eligible, you have to do what? You have to use the product in the way that the designer designed the product to be used. If you take your glasses and you wear them as shoes, you run around and then you go back and say, hey, these didn't work, then the designer might probably say, you have voided the warranty because you did not use the product the way I designed it to be used. Now, here's what's powerful. Here's, here's something that God gives. There's so many verses I could have chosen, but this is the one that the Holy Spirit put into my heart. Uh, Psalm chapter 91, verse 16, New International Version. This sounds like one of the benefits of the product. This sounds like something that is written into the warranty. Here's what it says. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. So if we're born onto this earth, we are all born with life. We're born. We're breathing. We live. And some people have a better life than others. And uh, by the help of God and making wise decisions, we all can hopefully improve our lives here. 
Amen. When we get to eternity, you don't have to worry about breathing problems. You don't have to worry about foot problems and gout and all that. Once you're in God's presence, everybody equally will enjoy eternity. But while we're here on earth, there are some differences. There are some hindrances, and some of us have some obstacles in our way. But here's something that the, the, the designer, the producer, the manufacturer of human beings has told us. I will satisfy you with long life. And, but here's what he's saying. A part of me guaranteeing my warranty is you have to do some things I've told you to do. If not, you void the warranty. Well, my marriage ain't going well. When's the last time you prayed? You know, my health is not the, well, are you eating the kind of food that the word of God says you're supposed to eat? Well, that's religious. It's not just religious. It's common sense. Amen. Some of us are eating plastic. You know, we're, we're eating crazy stuff, and then we're saying, well, Lord, how come I'm not healthy? And God says, because you're doing things that's voiding the warranty. If you follow my will, my word, my way, then you can say, Lord, <laughs> we're doing what you said. We need you to show up. We need you to fix this thing. We need you to handle this particular thing. And so a big part of that is obeying the word of God. So um, I believe when we obey God's word and we're focusing on the Ten Commandments today, and today we're focusing on the on the Sabbath, that it helps that warranty, it helps to satisfy us with that long life that God is, is talking about with us. So now when it comes to the Sabbath, uh, they, they've done some research, and one of the research says this: that if 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 some if, if you have enough rest in your life, then your life expectancy is supposed to increase. The more that you rest, the more that you take care of yourself when it comes to rest, then uh, uh, studies show that you will live longer. It, it also, another study uh, showed that if you, if you sleep for six hours every night but have a consistent, organized lifestyle, then you, you will live longer, according to the study, than someone who sleeps eight to 12 hours but doesn't have an organized life or lifestyle. So, so we're learning here rest and Sabbath is not just sleep because we're going to find out when the Hebrew people went to the temple for Sabbath, they didn't show up to go sleep. So rest and sleep, even though sleep can be a part of rest, rest is not sleep and sleep is not rest. There's a difference because you can get a whole lot of sleep and still be depressed. You get a whole lot of sleep and still get nothing done. You can get a whole lot of sleep and still be lazy. So it's not just the amount of sleep. It's, 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 it's the balance of sleep, but also having an organized lifestyle and having some discipline in your life. Amen. Am I helping somebody this morning? Because, amen, those of us who are spiritual, we want to name and claim everything, but there's some things you just have to do you can't claim. You have to do them. <laughs> you have to do them. I don't want to do them. Well, then you don't want the warranty. Amen. So you have to do them. We have to crucify our flesh and do them uh, and have some discipline in our lives. Now, when it comes to the Sabbath, it is, it is a law, but, but here's what the Word of God says about the Sabbath. In Mark chapter 2, verse 27, uh, then, then he said unto them, and this is Jesus now, so it helps us to translate the Old Testament law into the New Testament because we're living in the New Testament dispensation, not the Old and whenever things aren't clear, that's when arguments and division comes in. But this is clear because Jesus himself addresses the Sabbath and says something about it in the New Testament. He says, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. In the New Living Translation, the same verse says this. Then Jesus said to them, the Sabbath, the Sabbath was made to meet the needs of people and not people to meet the requirements of the Sabbath. So when trying to fulfill a Sabbath feels like pain and sorrow and suffering, and you got to smoke crack before you come to church so you can enjoy church, then, then, then church is not being what it's supposed to be. Come on now. I hear there's some terrible things that people are involved in, including trafficking, where sometimes they got to smoke something, they got to get high, they got to get drunk to fulfill it. And some of us, we hate church. We hate God, we hate worship, and we got to do some crazy stuff just to come out here and pretend like we're enjoying ourselves. We're doing something wrong because Sabbath is supposed to be enjoyable. 
It's supposed to be pleasurable. Come on now. That's not supposed to be something that we're running away from. And so we might be doing something wrong or our understanding needs to be enlightened. Because listen, God doesn't want you in his presence if you don't want to be in his presence anyway. We talked on Bible study. You showed up to the table, but you don't have your praise garments on. I don't want you here anyway. So, so we, we have to work through this because Sabbath is not just so we can please him. Sabbath is so that we can be empowered. We can be transformed. We can be blessed. We can be changed. It's an interaction. It's a relationship. It's intimacy. And if two people come to the bed of intimacy and only one person's enjoying themselves, then that's not the purpose for the bed of intimacy. Everybody's supposed to enjoy themselves. And God wants to meet a group of people who are as excited to be there with him as he is excited to be there with them come on are we feeling this the holy spirit on that oh that's what sabbath is oh that's what sabbath's supposed to look like and just like we would in the natural whether it's turning on a certain music or having a certain ambiance or serving a certain kind of meal or you know Carrying yourself a certain way. Those of us who are married, you might have a wife that says, shave the beard. Everybody else likes the beard, but I don't, and you're married to me. So stuff like that. You know, and, and, and that causes Sabbath to be what it needs to be. Somebody give God some praise. Amen? Because Sabbath is really no more than a celebration of us spending time with him and him spending time with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so how, how did or how do Jewish people celebrate Sabbath? I think it's important for us to at least know that so we can pull uh, some things from that and get some understanding. So when you look at Sabbath and how it is, it is done, uh, there are three things uh, that take place in Sabbath. The first thing is praying, uh, and the second thing is eating, and the third thing is resting, but none of it ha is sleeping. Like there is no Sabbath day where people go to the temple and they just lay down and go to sleep. So it's like, wow. And so one of the things that I'm going to say at the end, I'll say it now in case I forget, is God says the purpose for Sabbath is not just so you would rest. The purpose for Sabbath is so you can be rested so when you spend intimate time with me, you're not falling asleep. And for the married folk, and some of y'all who ain't living right, but for the married folk, when you in the bed, baby, I'm here, I'm here. But one of y'all sleeping, ain't nothing happening. And, and, and Garfield, don't get yourself in trouble, man. Don't do. You're supposed to hold those laughters in. Don't just. That newlywed couple, give them a hand. That's why I'm, I'm, I'm picking on them. Amen. And uh, we want to make it to 25 years, 25 months, hopefully. Just, um, um, but, you know, I went to church, but you were sleeping. Come on, come on now. Come on, come on. I've got to preach. Come on now. I mean, we've all slept in church from time. But I'm just saying, like, not just being, not just being there physically, but being there physically, mentally, emotionally. So I've been married for 25 years. I can be sitting in front of my wife, and she says something to me, and I'm zoned out. I have no idea what she said. And the kind of wife I have, she said, what did I just say? I'm like, oh, Lord. But she don't know I'm prophetic, so I say, Lord, tell me what she said. And then he saves me. Amen. He just says what she said was. Amen. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. And so in interestingly enough, uh, Sabbath, a part of Sabbath is praying. They'll pray, you know, in, in their tradition. They may light candles and do different things, but they're praying. They're thanking God <clears throat> for what he's done for them. They're praying about the future. And the beautiful thing about Sabbath in the Jewish community is they do it as a family. You don't see the, the father in one room and the daughter in the closet and, and, and the dog outside and whatever. But everybody comes together and they're celebrating God. They're celebrating love. They're celebra celebrating their community. Uh, then they have a whole lot of eating. Everybody say eating. eating. Turn to your neighbor and say eating. eating. And we're going to break this down uh, in a moment what the eating represents. But that's also a part of 
the Sabbath. And there's a reason for that. And the last part is resting. And what's interesting, if you're in ministry, you know that Sunday is not a day of rest. It's, it's, it's the opposite. It's the day of work. And so some of us need to make Monday our Sabbath or some other day when we're just like disconnecting from our labor. But what happens is even for the Jewish people, it's not that they're doing nothing. Listen carefully. They're doing something, but it's different to what their job is. It's different to what their labor is. They are disconnecting, and we're going to find out later, so that they can properly reconnect later. They're disconnecting to reconnect. They're unplugging so they can replug, and this is the time for doing that. In the Jewish community, Sabbath starts at sundown on Friday and usually ends at sundown on Saturday. So it's a sundown to sundown. And as we discussed, there's a difference between uh, sleeping and resting. Now, let me give you an acronym for rest. You know, I'm big into acronyms. Amen. I think it's fun. All right. So rest is this. Recharging enables strong turnarounds. Come on now. Recharging enables strong turnarounds. Because Sabbath is just a moment of rest. Amen. When Sabbath is over, you got to get back to work. And so it's important to do that. So here's here's what uh, a Sabbath experience looks like uh, from an example here in Scripture. I told you I was going to talk about Elijah. This is 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 5 through 9. Uh, Now, if you read previously in, in the chapters before this, you'll see that The Lord used Elijah in a mighty way. He did some great work. This is right after, I believe, he called fire from heaven and all kinds of amazing things. He physically went around and and he ended like 300 and something false priests. I mean, he physically, that wasn't a spiritual thing. This dude was strong enough to physically go and end all of them. And so he was tired. He did a whole lot of work. And so we see here, uh, 1 Kings 19, 5 through 9, New Living Translation. Then he lay down and slept under the broom tree. But as he was sleeping, an angel touched him and told him, get up and what? Get up and eat. He looked around and there beside his head was some bread baked on hot stones in a jar of water. So he ate and drank and lay down again. Then the angel of the Lord came again and touched him and said, Get up and eat some more, or the journey ahead will be too much for you. Come on. So he got up and ate and drank, and the food gave him enough strength to travel 40 days and 40 nights to Mount Sinai, the mountain of the Lord. A couple of things I want to look at here. Number one, as we see here, there's a difference between rest and sleeping. Now, the angel will just let him sleep. Oh, you just need some sleep. It was a combination. It was a combination of sleep. Uh, it was also a combination of communication. The angels were speaking to him, but it was also a combination of him eating. And so we see here in this Sabbath experience, He was pulled away from his work. He wasn't prophesying. He wasn't preaching. He wasn't cutting up false priests. He was under a tree. He was resting. But what was the purpose for the Sabbath? It wasn't just a retreat from his labor. It was also so he could prepare for the next thing God had for him to do. Woo! See, I did that quietly. Usually I did it loudly. See how God helped me? I just did it a little quietly. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you, you're struggling in this season because you never rested from the last one. You may have celebrated from the last one, but did you rest? You may have slept and disconnected, but did you, did you, did you Sabbath? Did you not only disconnect? My, my wife is going through a sabbatical time, and she's doing some rest. And, and, and she said that, that in this season, she's saying, Lord, show me what you want to show me. Do what you want. So she's not just sleeping, but she's going through it. Number one, whenever we go into Sabbath, we need to go through a season of healing because you, you may have gotten damaged from the last season. How many know you can win, but you still might have some cuts and bruises? 
I mean, there's very few sporting events or whatever in, in the finals where it's like 10 to 0. It might be 10 to 9. It might be 10 to 8. It may be 10 to 5. It may be 10 to, but, but, but there might be some things the enemy got. There might be some things, some score. They might have, you, you won the war, but some of us are bleeding from the battles. So Sabbath is a season where we, we can be restored, we can be healed from the last season. Even if you won, you may have lost some things. You may have to be healed from some things. The next thing the Sabbath is for is for just simply recharging, just resting, getting yourself built back up uh, for whatever. Uh, uh, well, before, before you rest up for what God wants to do next, you just have to come to a place of normalcy, just being healed and whole. And there's some people in church who are not normal. We, we, we're, just, we're just not normal. Like, like, like we use the Holy Ghost as a drug. We use ministry performance as a drug. Come on now. We're, we're casting out demons. Folk getting delivered, but your electric bill ain't paid. Like your, your, your kids don't even know, you know, if you love them or not. For some of us, ministry is easier than real life. Because the anointing can carry you places you can't carry yourself. And the anointing can be like a drug. When you can't get affirmation at home, you can get affirmation in church. Just cook the pastor a pie or something. Just sign up for a department all of a sudden. But at home, your kids and grandkids like, you know, I ain't going to your church because I know you ain't the real thing. You got them folk at Revive Fools, but we know what you, how you cuss. What you do, come on now, what lies you tell, tell mama I'm not home. You just taught your child how to lie. We're being practical this morning, amen. amen. So we see here what a Sabbath looked like. It wasn't just Elijah like, man, this is so boring, I got I to gotta obey God, I got to sit here. No, he, he was being refreshed, revived, and renewed, and that's our motto here, because we want God to refresh and revive and renew us every day of our lives. I want to point out something interesting that I just discovered, that there are ten commandments, but within this commandment, there's actually two. There's actually two commandments, and God showed me by revelation uh, that one cannot work without the other. All right, here we go. Because Sabbath will not make sense if this part is not a part of it. Here we go. A a Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 and 9. Let's look at it. Remember the Sabbath, seventh day, to keep it holy, which is set apart, dedicated to God. So that's, that's the law. That's the official law. But then look at verse 9. Six days... You shall labor and do all your work. Do you know what? That's a command as well. Now, do you know a glass of cold water has no value if you haven't been outside in the hot sun working? If you're sitting in the air conditioning all day and just chilling and somebody hands you a glass of cold water, it's not going to have the same value as someone who has been laboring. The Bible talks about entering into his rest. For some people, heaven is not going to make any sense because you, 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 you don't need a reward. You haven't done anything to deserve a reward. Heaven is a reward. God can be a reward. His presence can be a reward. But, but the, a reward only has value if the reward is, uh, is, is given as a result of you doing something to need or warrant that particular reward. So, so Sabbath church and Sabbath doesn't, need, doesn't make sense if you haven't been pouring out what I taught you last week. you still full from last week's sermon, you haven't preached to anybody, you haven't witnessed, you haven't prayed for anyone, you haven't exercised your faith at all, you haven't even tried to say no to sin one time, you, you haven't, you know, encouraged anybody, you haven't prayed, you haven't done any of that, you've come back and you are carrying stagnant manna in your spirit, you are carrying waters that don't flow, one of the main things that killed the miners uh, in California when they came to look for gold, it wasn't animals, it wasn't Indians, it was poisonous water. And the way that water becomes poisonous is when it is stagnant. 
And when it doesn't flow, that which once gave life now takes life away. Mm, the Bible says that when the children of Israel were given manna from heaven, they were told one thing. You have to eat it all today, except on the Saturday or the Sabbath, it would last for an extra day. But if you try to hoard or keep or hold the anointing of yesterday to somehow manifest in the commissioning or calling of tomorrow, it doesn't work because his mercies are new every morning and we're supposed to get fresh men. Give us this day our daily bread, not just because we're hungry, but because the bread that was made for today uh, includes the nutrients for the attacks of today. And some believers are trying to carry the anointing of yesteryear. Well, my grandpa laid the first brick, but this is not your grandpa's battle. This is your, ooh, that's why David didn't bring the stones from home. He collected his five stones from the battlefield. He collected what he needed from the battle at the battle. Come on now. Mm. And so we see here that in order for the Sabbath, this is powerful, because laws and rules, we talked about this last week. If people don't see the relevance for laws and rules, there's a tendency to question, there's a tendency to disobey, there's a tendency to rebel because it doesn't make sense. Sabbath only makes sense if you've been working for six days. I'm telling you if, you, if you've been on the battlefield and we say we're going to pray for you, you say, oh, my goodness, I'm so appreciative. If you're like a rebellious teenager or a young adult, we're going to pray for you. Oh, I don't want to get no prayer. Y'all leave me alone. Like, why y'all bothering? Because they ain't been working. Mm, this is powerful. An intimacy with God is just as useless as intimacy in a marriage if you've been cheating on your spouse and being intimate somewhere else anyway. There's no value during that time because you've already poured out somewhere else. Sabbath. The, the laws make sense. The word of God makes sense. When you are an active participant in Christianity, I know he loves you. I know he has grace for you, but he's expecting you to do your part. And if you can't, ask him to help you do your part. But for those who are not working six days, the Sabbath day is going to mean nothing. In fact, it's getting in your way of partying. It's getting in your way of living in your flesh. But I guarantee you, when you put your hands to the plow... And you obey God and you're busy. And, and, and when I say working six days, that's working for your family, working for yourself, working for the kingdom, working to better yourself, working for your community. When you're busy doing those things, unplugging for the Sabbath not only makes sense, but you'll receive the nourishment and the nutrients you need to get back to work. Somebody give God some praise. Come on now. Mmm. Sabbath without work just helps to increase laziness. Helps to increase laziness. A vacation for people who don't work has no to little value. And the last thing I want to say, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and close out, I think, with this right here. Or we'll, we'll do two things. So the two things, then we're done. Um, so God wants us to be well-rested. Uh, so that we can enjoy our time of worship with him. We can enjoy our time in his presence. We can focus on him. We can worship and we can have a good interaction. And so Sabbath or resting is important so that we can connect with him the way that we're supposed to. Uh, God says, don't come to me all tired. Rest and then come into my presence so we can have a good time together. So Psalm chapter 100, I want to read this. Uh, as a part of that, and you, you tell me <laughs> whether this sounds like somebody who was rested or not, somebody who was participating or not when it comes to being in God's presence. All right, NIV, shout for joy. If you're tired, you ain't shouting. Come on now. If you're sleepy, you're not shouting. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. When you're tired, you ain't glad about nothing. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. See, there's that warranty thing again. It is he who made us, and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture, 
enter into his gates with what? With thanksgiving. And his courts with what? That don't sound like a bunch of tired folk, does it? Come on now. Mm. Give thanks to him, praise his name, for the Lord his good and his love endures forever. Amen. Praise God. All right. Now we're going to go ahead and close out with this just from a technical standpoint. Uh, and I want to address this once again as sensitively as I can. So number one, uh, historically, it is, it is very clear that the Sabbath day was celebrated on Saturday. In fact, part of the definition, Sabbath does have to do with the day uh, Saturday as well. So uh, in Israel, when they celebrate the Sabbath day, it's on a Saturday. Uh, there are different denominations, uh, Seventh Day at Venice and, and others, that we have a group here at Revive Church. They meet here on Saturday. And we can actually be a blessing to each other because they need a place to meet. And we need supplement for income to help us do things in the community. So it's a great partnership. It works. Uh, but I want to say this sensitively because at the end of the day, uh, are we supposed to meet on Sunday? Are we supposed to meet on Saturday? The first thing I'm going to say to you is we're going to look at the word of God. Amen. And the second thing is you pray about it. You, you seek the Lord. You seek the Lord. Uh, if we were having church in Israel, we'd probably be meeting on Saturday because that's the only day that the whole city would even shut down anyway to give you an opportunity to do that. But let's see what the word of God says about this issue because it does speak to it. Colossians chapter 2 verse 8. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. So pause there for a second. So in any discussion, any argument, any situation, uh, make sure that no one is holding you captive uh, through arguing things of scripture or arguing things of, of philosophy, uh, everything from how you're supposed to be baptized and what's the woman's role in the household, the man's role in the household. Uh, if you talk to us, we can give you great pointers from scripture and help to keep things balanced uh, but don't get held captive just because somebody wants to push their conviction on you or their religious belief on you uh, then let's go down here to the next part of this it says verse 16 here we go therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink and with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration or a Sabbath day. See that? These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. Amen. Somebody give God some praise on that. Amen. So somebody says, y'all should be worshiped on Saturday. Say, you know, I understand that you believe that way. No problem. I get it. We're not going to hate them. They're not wrong. They say, hey, y'all shouldn't worship on Sunday. They say, well, we understand where you're coming from as well. But we're not going to argue that. Amen? We're not going to argue that. Uh, when it comes to Sabbath, and I talked about intimacy, spending time with the Lord, uh, in some married homes and some families, uh, it works best for them to schedule intimacy. Okay? So 5 o'clock every Saturday. And now that y'all are like growing up as kids, now you're going through trauma. Is that why we went to grandma's house every Saturday at 5 o'clock? It is. Grandma didn't even want you there. Amen. But it was, it was scheduled for you to be out the house. Amen. All right. All right. Uh, but what happens is even with that schedule, if one party has an attitude, oh, man, here go 5 o'clock again. On, oh, man, we got to, oh. Yeah, girl, I can't hang out with y'all because you know, I got that 5 o'clock thing on a Saturday. Well, that's, well, then there's no point. Just cancel it. Come on now. So there's some who are religiously accurate. In fact, the Bible talks about the scribes and the Pharisees, how they obeyed the letter of the law, but they didn't have the spirit of the law in their hearts. So you can attend church every Sunday and still go to hell. You can attend church every Saturday and still go to hell. Because just showing up and attending is not everything that's needed for a relationship with the Lord. But by scheduling things, by having order in your life, we talked about this last week, by having a rhythm. For some of y'all, if God left it up to you, you'd never go to church. If God said, well, you know, come into my presence when you feel like it. Okay, it might be 30 years. You don't feel like it. 
You know, so, so, and then for those of y'all like who want to come in his presence every day, no, no, go work now. Go pay your bills. Amen. Here, here's the rhythm God sets because some of y'all would never work. You would just lay around in his presence. Amen. You would lay around in some married couples like that too. Amen. When intimacy every day, all day, don't go to work, go get a job and we'll celebrate your paycheck uh, with a little bit of, with a, with a little bit of intimacy at the right time. Amen. Amen. Bow your heads, close your eyes. I'm done. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for this great time we could have in church today, the great time of worship, Lord God, the great time of being in your presence, the great time of being with each other. God, it makes no sense to be in a church the size of Revive, and we don't know each other, God, that everybody here should know at least two or three people if they're members here, God, because we are the body of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we're not perfect. We're all striving towards perfection. But Lord God, you established Revive Church. This was not a man-made idea. There's 1,500 churches in greater Charlotte, but you decided that there was space for Revive Church. You wanted this church to be here, God. You wanted these people to be gathered. And we just pray and pronounce blessings over our lives. God, help each one of us as we press through to spend time with you, God, as, as whatever we've learned from the lesson last week and, and this week about Sabbath, about resting, about being in your presence, about having a culture of rest, but also a culture of work without becoming religious, being genuine, but making sure that we're following the benchmarks you've given to us. God, we, we ask you to forgive us for religifying everything, arguing about everything, Instead of just having a genuine, genuine relationship and connection with you, God, forgive us, Lord God, that we get caught up. Even, even in, in this day, you know, am I Baptist, am I Pentecostal, am I Presbyterian? Or there's so many denominations, and sometimes we don't work together. Lord God, we have division. At the end of the day, you only made one heaven. There's only one heaven, only one new earth that you're making. And it's not for different denominations, it's for your children. God, we're, we're, we're Christians first and church members later, but we're your children first. With all heads bowed and eyes closed, if you're here today and you do not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, maybe you're not sure about it, maybe you're still learning, but you know that you need to get things right with God. Maybe as a child you went to church and you gave your life to Him, but you haven't been living it, haven't been walking it, and you just want to renew and refresh your relationship with him. Uh, whatever the situation is, we, we provide a prayer here every Sunday, uh, unless we forget to do it. We don't usually forget. We provide an opportunity to simply connect your hand with his, to simply give you an opportunity to vote yes, yes for him being your savior and your Lord, and for you to turn your life over to him so that he can be in control instead of you trying to control it. That's you here today, and you say, say, Pastor, I need that prayer. I want to make sure my life is right with God. Then just raise your hand where you're seated. Just put it up. I won't make you come to the front. But just put your hand up. You say, Pastor, that's me. I, want, I need that in my life. I need that prayer right now. I need to make sure my life is right with God. I've been, been running, or I've been deciding, or now's the day where I want to respond to Jesus. Ask him to wash away my sins and make me a new person. Anybody here, put your hand up. I don't want to miss you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever your age, it's fine. Whatever your age, children, whoever you are, if you hear God calling you to have a relationship with him, just put your hand up. We're going to pray with you. Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 9 and 10. Amen. And for those who are watching online, um, I, di I didn't see any hands, but in case I missed anyone and anyone online, let's just repeat this for their for their purpose. Say, Heavenly Father, I thank you for sending your Son to die on the cross for every one of my sins. The ones I did, the ones I thought about, and the ones I didn't even realize I did. Wash me from my head to my toe. Make me a new person, as your word says. Forgive me for my sins. Help me to live for you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Somebody give God some praise, amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. As we're, as we're going to prepare here to close in a minute, uh, I just kind of want to bring your understanding back to what we're doing here. 
Uh, number one, it's, it's important to know your word. Amen? Don't have the five percenters knowing more about your God than you do. Don't have the Muslims out here knowing more about your Jesus than you do. Come on now. Don't have the black Hebrews running circles around you because you don't know nothing about the Bible. Come on. So it's knowing your God and knowing him, but then also understanding the depth of the Lord. That as we, as we study the word of God and as we see his intention with what he wrote and not just what he wrote, it, it, it's designed to bring about intimacy. And so we're going to find intimacy through these Ten Commandments. Amen? And we're not going to run from God's law. We're going to run toward it. And we're going to trust him. We're going to love him. And we're going to see our lives tr change and transformed uh, for the better. If you'd like to become a member of Revive Church, would you please stand and come to the front. We would love to have you as a part of us as a member. Anybody for membership, uh, we can explain more as we go. It's a simple process. Anyone for membership and you've been visiting, you've been coming, you've been checking us out. Uh, you don't have a home church or maybe you do and you're not getting fed. Uh, either way, would you please come to the front? We would love to have you as a part of our church family. Amen. Uh, if there's no one, no one moving, if you want to do it online, we can also do that. And if you're here uh, physically and you prefer not to, um, you know, publicly walk up to the front, you don't have to. Uh, we, we offer that option online as well. Uh, we understand this is the new generation. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God bless you. Uh, Deacon, would you close us out?